Hello everyone, this is Video Boy, and welcome to LibGDX 2D Tutorial Series Episode 5 now. So, uh, last episode we talked about mouse hovering and uh, mouse movement input and uh, coordinates and stuff like that for the main menu. So this episode we're going to finish off the main menu by adding the click events so you can go into the game and things like that. Uh, so that's fairly simple. I just wanted to mention something though before I start off the episode. Uh, this episode from now on um, are going to be a bit shorter so they're going to be about 10 minutes now. Uh, I'm doing this because it's um, it takes a lot of time to uh, render and upload longer videos that are like like last week's was 25 minutes. It took me like uh, two hours just to render and upload it. So I'm going to make them shorter just so I can save some time and work on uh, things that are a little bit more important to me right now like uh, archipelago and schoolwork and things like that. And um, yeah, uh, so this tutorial series will probably be done by the end of May. It was probably only going to be like maybe eight more episodes if I stay consistent. And there's also going to be a couple of extra episodes, like bonuses for uh, how to deploy on uh, iOS and um, uh, HTML5. Okay, so let's get into this tutorial. Uh, and yes, I still have that glitch. Okay, so I added the images. I fixed them from last episode. If you remember, the images were kind of like, uh, they're too big, there's too much space. So now if you run it, the hovering should make a little bit more sense. There's still a little bit of space, but that's okay. We'll see. If you hover it, it works well. Okay, so that's great, right? Now let's add the clicking events. So the clicking is actually fairly simple. So, um... Oh yes, I just want to mention too, I changed the constants a little bit here. So if you're going to just clone the GitHub, it's not a big deal. You're going to get the new variables. But if you're copying it line by line, um, you're going to want to change these constants to match that. So it looks like, uh, like uh, what it looks like on my screen. Okay. So let's do this. Okay, so... We, what we need to do, so basically here we already have the calculation to see if the mouse is within the area of the exit button. So now we need to check if the mouse was just clicked. So if gdx dot input, it's another input thing by the way. Input dot is is touched. Uh, sorry about that. I wasn't e exactly sure. I was expecting it to be called something else. Okay, so if this if it gets touched, so if you're using a touch screen, it's of course when the person taps there. Uh, if it's a mouse, it's if they clicked. Okay, so it's the exit button, right? So we want to exit the game. So if it's touched, do gdx.app.exit. So gdx.app just like gdx.input gives you some data about things that are happening on in the game or uh, just lets you do s s like uh, basic functions so the exit one of course makes you exit the game okay so if you click on it there you go it exits the game so pretty simple right so let's do the same thing for the play button alright put that here Uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right, so we don't want to exit the game, of course, when the person presses the play button. So what we do is we want to set the new screen to the main game screen. So if you guys remember here, if you go in space game, uh, in the create method, we do this dot set screen, um, new main menu screen, right? So what we need to do in here is we need to set the screen of our space game. So we actually have a reference to space game here and we call it a game. So just like we did with game.batch we can do game dot set screen and we'll do new main menu screen and of course it requires a space game object to be passed to it so we'll just pass game. 
Okay. So we run this. All right, so we click exit, exit, and you click play. Okay, I made a very important mistake here. I did main menu screen by accident. This will be main game screen. Uh, <laughs> all right, and we want to dispose the screen. It's just a good practice when you're done with the screen. Uh, you call the dispose method. It's part of the screen tools. So when you call dispose, it's going to run the code in here. Right now we don't have anything, but maybe eventually we're going to have something. All right, I have an error. Uh, it's not important right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, my computer is so broken. Okay, so we said to new game screen. Now it should work. But basically what we're doing before was we're just creating new ma main menu screens over and over again. There you go. Now it works. Now we can use the arrow keys and move this guy around just like we're used to. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to change a couple of little settings around just to uh, get ready for next week's uh, tutorial. So I want to start off by instead of having a red background for everything, make a black background. Since it's going to be a space game, right? It should be space themed. Uh, oh yeah, here. So this uh, gdx.gl.clear, it's another GDX thing. Uh, this refers to OpenGL, so it gives you some access to some um, methods in OpenGL. So this one clears the screen with a certain color, and uh, this one, I'm not exactly too sure what it does, but I think it sets up the screen to be to use a different uh, set of colors. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so now we have a black screen. It looks a bit weird. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a tint here. So this is actually kind of good. So I can show you guys how the color tint works. Uh, so the way OpenGL works is that the colors are from zero to one and they're decimals. So if you're used to using something like Photoshop or something like that, uh, you're probably used to using zero to 255, right? Well, for OpenGL, it's zero to one. So one would be like 255 and zero would be, well, zero. So if you want to set like a tint, you want to set a dark color, you can do like uh, 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.1, and you have to add the F after to convert it to a float, or else it just gives you an error. All right, so we run that. All right, it's still a little too dark, maybe do three. All right, there you go. That's a bit better. I think I might make it a little bit more blue. So the order it works is red, green, blue, right? So if you want to make it a bit more blue, you just add a bit more to the blue value. And we should get some sort of like darkish blue here. Mm, not dark enough. Four, one. Hmm. Still not dark enough. Do three. And do one five here like this. I think that'll be good like that. So you can just play around with it. Yeah, that's okay. We'll keep that. That looks pretty good. So um that pretty much ends this episode. It's pretty short, like I said it was going to be. Uh so next week what we're gonna do is we're going to actually start adding some gameplay. So we're going to add the background that scrolls. That's the main thing we're going to focus on. And we're probably going to quickly add some sort of main menu logo for the game. Uh, I'm not even sure what we're going to call it. Probably just space game. Um, and then the episode after that, we're probably going to start actually working on the game. And adding the animations for the ship and everything. So that ends this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more tutorials. And I'll see you guys next Saturday. Goodbye.